had a little move around. All the plants that have finished flowering, they're going to go along that border now. Get it a bit tidier in this corner. Got this nice lily coming out. This is the uh, Labour Corner, July the 5th. England, Britain's Independence Day, free from Tory rule. <laughs> Squashes are settling in nicely. Runner beans, doing well. Surviving the tumultuous summer. The kale, or cavalinero rather, ready to harvest. We've pretty much picked this stuff clean, the perpetual spinach. French beans, daisy, the goose, got in here again and just demolished them. Oh, to be honest, if she hadn't have done it, I think the wind would have done. They're such weedy little plants. I'm really not a fan. Beetroot. Definitely ready to uh, start making little salads out of. A lot of the lettuces started to bolt already. I guess it's down to um, length of days because we certainly haven't had the warmth. Watching Charles Dowden, he said it's been one of the worst years for his tomatoes. And, um, you know, if someone like him's struggling down south, then. Yeah, we didn't have much hope up here where it, it has, well, it's not like we've had sunny days, it's been moments of sun, so what can you do? You can't really predict this sort of summer. Rhubarb ready to harvest, going to use that for uh, making some wine. That's the result of the poll. I asked everyone what I should make, jam, chutney or wine, and wine was the resounding winner. We haven't bothered with potatoes this year, um, but we've got a couple coming up from last year's. A foot long and it's good to pick. Now this is some of the biggest rhubarb I've ever harvested. Look at the size of that stalk. Proper meaty. Look at that bad boy. Awesome. Left it a bit, a bit long to harvest really, a bit late, but certainly resulted in some nice stems. My God, look at that. Wowzers. Oh, are they getting bigger and bigger? Kill someone with that. I'll leave these thinner ones for now. Let them fatten up. Oh.
I'll let some light get in there. Whew. Well, there you go. Crap weather for tomatoes, courgettes, cucumbers, but rhubarb, my days. That's the best we've ever done. So one thing I would note is that since we've been gardening, we've always had our own homemade compost and uh, everything's always done really well in it. But we've obviously failed last year. It was just too much brown waste. Um, so this year, well, this whole part of the veggie patch was just black soil because of like, it was all just nettles and uh, it had been a dumping ground for green waste. So the soil was really rich in nutrients, but now you can see it's just, just gray, dead, completely devoid of anything. So Sarah's just scraped up the very last bit of compost that we had from over there and just, uh, done a mulch with it that will definitely benefit what we've got going on. This is how you find Betsy, either snoozing or barking, aren't you? Me? You a sleepy sausage? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Little piglet. Ellie's keeping guard, eh? Good boy. Amazing what a bit of compost will do. The courgettes are starting to look good. Tomatoes, a little bit weedy still, but hopefully they'll get there, somewhere anyway. Got the roots poking through from the rosemary. Oh, they've died off now, but that was Rooting out, baby courgette coming up. Got the spring onions and I think that's perpetual spinach. Doing well. And then the kales. I think it's Russian kale or Siberian kale. I'm not sure which. This happened last year and we didn't know what was going on. It was on pretty much the opposite side over here. Big hole appeared out of nowhere and uh, a load of dead bumblebees. Got some living ones here now. They're obviously trying to repair it. Apparently badgers will come in, break into the nest to steal the honey. They must have bloody thick skins to take all those bee stings. Now, Sarah's sister down in Lincolnshire has harvested so many strawberries they're actually sick of them. We have harvested two. And so I just couldn't be bothered with it anymore. But 
there are quite a few strawberries on them now and uh, I'm going to give them the best chance so I'm going to do some weeding and uh, hope for the best. Well there we go guys. A lot of work. Probably the most hateful job in gardening. Weeding. But they, it's all done. Fully weeded and watered. And I'll keep on top of it now, just so I know if I don't get any strawberries, it's not because I didn't bother, it's simply because we have had the worst summer on record. Something that has been going really well is this compost. So it's a foot from the top and I have topped it up to the top. I've lost count now how many times. Just grass clippings, garden waste, dragging compost or brown waste off here and topping it up. And so much in fact that this whole area here has been emptied out and spread onto that. So I've started taking the brown off there now. You see I've got the uh, rhubarb from the wine, kitchen scraps. So I'm really hoping good things will come out of that. So like I've done with the strawberry bed, Sarah's done in here a lot of weeding. You can see the rhubarb is uh, coming on well since the last picking. Got loads of new leaves sprouting out. We've had quite a few salads with dinner now. Um, we've been having the beetroot, the oak leaf and the cos along with the spring onions. I'm not sure where they are. There's some baby spring onions here. The squashes have actually started looking awful. You can see them yellowing. They just can't handle this cold weather. Although it is remarkably warm today, it is the first run of beans. Well, they don't look too bad. They don't look great, but got a few starting to uh, find their footing at least. Cavalinero, I mean, look at this bad boy. Oh, that's about two foot tall now. We've had quite a few meals with that and the dogs get it with their uh, breakfast in the morning. I think if you had a greenhouse and uh, polytunnels, you know, you're probably not too bad affected. Um, but really, it does go to show with this type of weather, you, you really need it to uh, get everything going. Um, I mean, I was saying last, well, I was saying next year, I kind of like to build some sort of polytunnels maybe a couple of foot off the ground just out of um, just get some polythene sheeting maybe and just create a, a little small um, polytunnel for the strawberries and you could do the same out here you know just a couple of foot off the ground just create a, a, a sort of warmer environment for everything but yeah it is what it is. So softwood cuttings are best taken early summer, late spring and hardwoods late summer, early autumn. Um, so not really early summer right now are we but it's certainly one of the first warm days we've had. So I'm going to risk it. We've got this beautiful red rose that's about 15 feet tall. So you want to put a 45 degree cut. Now it's good to do it next to a node I believe. And we'll remove these lower leaves and that's it. We'll get these into some water.
<laughs> so Sarah, for some reason, has decided to have another crack at the French beans. She sowed them direct out here and they've started to come up and she's put some chicken grit down to protect them from the slugs. Chickens are having a go at the chard. That's Perpetual good. spinach. Spinning. And we've got a couple of butternut squashes to come out now. These look really Nice dark green and healthy. So these are going in that giant plastic bucket thing and this old school bucket. See what the roots look like. Not great because these plants were damp for weeks. No, not bad, they've just started filling it out. Too bad, but water them and I didn't dry out for like three weeks because it was so cold. So I had to pull them out a little bit. It's funny, crow scarer. We haven't got any crows. It's a nice bit of plant gymnastics. <laughs> What Sarah's done then is just to test whether it's ready to plant or not, she just tossed it around. <laughs> the old classic. If it survives, it's ready to plant. So, our neighbour's garage was piled high with these, used once, never to be used again. So, we've got a couple of cucumbers in there, a couple more cucumbers in there, and then these tomatoes. I've just been going in there at night, coming out onto the table in the day. Mm -hmm. 